Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Snowy Cardinal. I'm gonna be sipping on, yeah, I can't pronounce this, uh, Vecchia Cantina, Rosso, I think that means red. But anyways, it's from Multipolciano, which is a place I've been to. So I know it's good wine, so that's what I'm gonna be sipping on. Uh, so let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, we're gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 canvas. You can get this at any of your local craft stores or online, and of course you can change up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using today. Um, I'm going to be using three brushes. I have a size 14 Filbert brush. I have a number 12 round synthetic brush, and I have a number zero round synthetic brush. I'm gonna be working with acrylic paints. The colors that I'm using today are titanium white, burnt umber, Mars Black, Green Oxide, Fire Red, and Deep Yellow. And of course you can change these colors up too, but that's what I'm gonna be using today. Uh, you're also gonna need a paper towel for drying your brushes after you wash them in your cup of water that you'll have at the ready. Um, and also for materials, I'm gonna be um, download or uploading for you a final picture of the painting that we do. So you'll be able to uh, download that on your own computer, print it if you want to, and use it as a reference as you go along this painting process. And that's all you're gonna need. All right, so for the first step, we're gonna be painting the background. I'm gonna be using my large filbert brush. The colors I'm gonna be using are white, brown, black and green. And as I do this, I'm gonna be using all four of these colors arbitrarily. I'm gonna be applying it in a circle fashion. I'm going to not paint my brush as I, or not wash my brush as I do this. And what's gonna happen is um, while I pick up each color with white in a kind of arbitrary fashion, it's gonna end up looking like there's spots of lightness and darkness throughout the background. And what that's gonna resemble is an out of focus foliage, like in the woods, you're gonna see, um, a, when taking a, a photograph, the photograph will focus on one thing. And in this particular image, the focal point will be our cardinal. So everything behind the cardinal is gonna be out of focus like it would be in a photograph. And we're trying to emulate like a forest behind it. So that's where I'm bringing in green and brown and maybe some pops of white for um, maybe some sunshine or some lightness peeking through some of those trees. Um, it is going to be in a snowstorm too, or there's going to be some snow coming down. So I'm also going to incorporate some gray, which is where you're seeing me add the black to it. Um, but all the while, I am using white as one of my dominant colors on my canvas. And that way, these colors end up looking nice and soft. They're going to blend really well together, um, and it's going to give it a nice kind of diverse look to it, um, but it is also going to uh, resemble that out of focus background that you might find in a photograph. So I'm just kind of continuing to add these colors along the way. I am using the circular motion. I don't wash my brush um, and I'm not using a lot of paint. So that way I can switch colors really quickly on the fly with um, without needing to wash my brush. But if you find yourself running into trouble and it's really almost becoming um, like muddled looking, that means that you have too much paint on your brush and what's happening is you're just starting to blend everything together. Um, so what I would do is I would probably, 
either dry your brush on your paper towel or wash and dry your brush and just kind of start back with a clean brush. Um, you can always, if you do something that you don't like, you can let the paint dry for a minute and then you can paint over it. Um, so just know that that's a wonderful thing with acrylic paint is you have that option to paint over it. Um, so just know, you know, there is no real mistakes um, because everything can be, can be either corrected or you can do another layer on top of it. Um, plus we're gonna be adding some snow later and we're gonna be adding some branches and some other elements that will definitely help to disguise anything that you've done that you might not think is you know the the most appealing or didn't come out exactly as you wanted it to and so as i'm tidying up here and kind of finishing um making sure i have all of my spots covered i am just kind of dipping my brush back into into the paint in various spots just so i can make sure i have a nice coverage and i've got a good um, variety of colors going on here without it being overwhelming. Um, the darker the background that you have, the more it's going to look like um, a little bit more stormy or more later in the day. The lighter you have, it'll just look like there's, you know, the sun is trying to peek through just a little bit more. Um, and I think that's about as far as I'm going to take this step. Um, so for the next step, what we're going to be doing is we'll be using that medium uh, round brush that you have, not the tiny one, but the medium one. So if you can ever stop painting, <laughs> like I have a difficult time stopping every now and again, um, once you stop painting, you can put this big brush away in your water cup and then you can take out that um, medium brush and dry it off on your paper towel in preparation for the next step. Okay, so what we're doing for the next step is we're gonna be using this uh, number 12 round brush. We're gonna be creating our branches. Um, I'm gonna be using brown and white to do my branches. I'm gonna use them both on my brush at the same time to create my branches. Um, I like to use both colors on my brush at the same time um, because it's gonna give it a more natural look and as I'm doing these branches, when I go to reload my brush, I'm not concerned if I have more white or more brown on it. Um, I do like to have like a thicker part at the base of it. And then these kind of branches, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put little buds on them. So I just loaded my brush with brown and white, and I'm gonna just do these like little, almost polka dots every, wherever I want to put them. This is gonna emulate the little, um, buds that you see on these winter trees when there's no leaves on them. So you can put a lot or a little, um, whatever works for you will be fine by me. And as I'm doing these branches, of course I've got this one up here. Um, I also am gonna be mindful of where my bird is gonna go. So my bird's gonna go pretty, in the, pretty much in the center, but I do need something for my bird to kind of hook onto or sit on. So as I'm doing these ones down here, I'm gonna be conscious of where I want my bird to go and I need something for it to sit on. So I'm still using brown and white. So I'm gonna tackle the ones that the bird is sitting on or hanging on to first. So I'm gonna just kinda of do one that's you know off to the, you know a little bit of an angle. Um, this one might be the one that the back leg hit, hooks onto. And then I guess I'm gonna do another one maybe in through here and maybe this is the one that the front leg hooks onto. And once you get, you know, established where, well, actually maybe my bird will hook onto, one leg will be on this one. I don't know, I'll decide when I go to put the bird on there, but at least I've got some, a couple of um, branches in here that um, I know that I can stabilize my bird with. And then I can just have fun with creating all these other branches. Um, I still know I want my bird in that area, so I'm not gonna put any branches in through there. I can have some little ones coming up off the ground. Maybe I want a couple coming in through here. Um, you can have as much fun with these as you want. You can see I'm not really holding my brush too tight, and I like my branches to have a little bit of, uh, almost like a wiggle to them or a bend to them, so that way they don't look like, um, like spikes 
or um, I don't know what, you know, straight sticks like toothpicks or something like that. So that's why I do add a little bit of wiggle to mine. Um, the white definitely helps to make it look a little bit more natural, um, but I'm not over blending it. So that way you have the, um, the, contrast in colors and I suppose you could use a little bit of black too if you wanted these colors to be a little bit more um, uh, stand out a little bit more with shadows and highlights but for me I just kind of hit it with the brown and the the white and I put the you know some little buds on every now and again and once I feel like I've got a good assembly over here and down at the bottom uh, maybe I'm gonna tweak this one a little bit but that's kind of about all I'm gonna do for these branches. Once you feel like you've got a good assembly, we're actually gonna um, use this medium brush for the next step as well, uh, but you're gonna have to wash and dry it. So wash and dry your medium brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are doing the base coat for our bird. We're gonna be using the number 12 round brush and we're gonna be using red paint only. So when painting a bird, um, you have two basic shapes, an egg for the body and a circle for the head. And there's various necks, uh, some birds, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a duck, it could be a flamingo, it could be a cardinal. The base of the body can always start as an egg and the base for the head can always start as a circle. Um, we're just gonna be using red paint as a, almost like a primer coat. We're gonna let that dry, then we're gonna go do some other things and come back and put the feathers and all the other details on. Um, for the shape of the, the egg in the circle, the egg, the pointy part of the egg is always gonna be where the tail is. So for me, I know I want my bird somewhere in this vicinity. I know my legs are gonna be somewhere attached to here. Oh, my paint was a little wet. Um, so I'm gonna put the tail right about here. So my egg is gonna come somewhere in this vicinity. So I'm gonna use red paint. I'm gonna decide where my tail is gonna be. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my egg from here. So you can make your egg as big as you want, um, as small as you want. Maybe you have multiple eggs. Um, going in different directions, but just know that the tail part is gonna be the pointy part. So once I've got my egg in place, and then my egg is a little pointy on the tail end, but that's all right, it'll, it'll all work out. And then I'm gonna put my circle into place, and from my cardinal is gonna be looking that way. So I'm gonna put the circle connected to the top of the egg, making it relatively, um, large so you know proportionately to the body but I don't want it to look like the head is independent of the body so what I'm going to do is where this neck portion is I'm going to connect that to the chest and I'm going to connect this to the back and there's my head now that I have my head I need a beak so my beak um, on a cardinal is pretty big. It starts about halfway down that face and think of it like a soft kind of triangle, almost going down in that direction. And then it's got a little bit of a rounded side on the top and the bottom. I'm just gonna color it in red. And now I have to do the identifiable crown on the top of the head. So I'm gonna start this right about where the forehead bends here, and it's gonna be um, almost a continuation of the forehead with red paint. Um, and I'm gonna try and get my hand out of the way here. So I'm gonna do it like up like this and kind of back. And I want there to be these little like feathers coming out the end. So I'm just kind of doing it something like this. Maybe you work a little bit harder at it than I am, but I just want my hand out of the way for you. And that's gonna be my little crown. If you feel like there's too much space here, you can always close that off a little bit or put a couple more feathers in through there. 
and then I need to put my tail on. So I'm going to use black paint, or excuse me, red paint. I'm going to come directly this way and just do a couple of swipes. Maybe it's a little bit wider at the end of the tail, not too much. These tails are pretty long on the cardinal. And then I'm going to add one more little spot coming out of my egg right about here. That's going to indicate where that wing comes out. So that's all I'm going to do for that base coat. So when you're done with that, um, we're going to be switching brushes to the small brush. So you can put your medium brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're going to be doing next is those lovely legs. I'm going to be using my small brush, the number zero round. Um, I'm going to be using black, brown, and white. Um, and the reason why I'm going to be using black, brown, and white is I don't want these to get um, confused with the, the sticks on the branches. So I'm using a, the black in it to identify it. So I'm going to put two legs on my bird, which totally makes sense. Um, I'm going to have one leg coming out from our side, which is here, and you're going to see part of it. It's going to hang on to this branch, and then I'll have another leg coming out behind, and it's going to hang on to this branch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just a diagonal line with all three colors on my brush at the same time. And if you go through some wet red, don't worry about it. And now I need a little claw hanging on to it on that side. And then if you can see a little bit on the other side, great. That's all I'm gonna do. I really want these to be kind of subtle just in case I don't do them great. Um, and then the other leg is gonna come out. I was gonna have it come out here, but I think it's a little bit too far away. So I'm gonna have it come out right here. And then it's gonna have a couple of little claws coming out like this, I want you to see it, so I'm gonna put a little bit more black on here. And that's all I'm gonna do. So I've got my leg here, it's attaching itself to this tree, and I've got my leg here, and it's attaching itself to this section. Um, and then we're gonna use the small brush for the next step, but you're gonna to have to wash it and dry it. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is the mask. For the bird, I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna use a black paint only. What I like to do is I'm gonna put a dot where the beak meets the forehead. And then what I'm gonna do is where the bottom part of the beak is, I'm gonna make a extended line into the face. So just a little bit into the face something like that. And then I'm gonna connect the top dot to here with a curved line. So this is going to separate my beak from my face. Now I'm gonna do the mask. I like to do for the part on the left where your eye is gonna sit, a similar shape to your beak, but it's gonna come in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna start here I'm gonna go something like this. That's gonna be that part. I can color that all in black. So I just take my little brush, color it in black, and I am also going to, oops, I had wet paint on my hand, it's all right. I'm also going to give it some black feathers coming down this neck. So I just am taking that black paint, this to me, is all part of the little mask area and I bring a couple of little feathers just poking out. These are great places later we can put a little bit of snow sitting on those um, pieces of feathers and if you want to see part of the other side of the face you can just add a little black line right in through here and that's going to give you the other side of the face. And you just readjust this whatever way you want to. I kind of like mine the way that it is, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it. Um, and we are going to change brushes for the next step. We'll be using that medium brush. So once you get this into place, you can put the small brush away in your water cup and take out your medium brush. All right. So for the next step, I'm going to be using that medium round brush. It's a uh, number twelve, 
and I'm going to be creating the feathers on my bird. Uh, I will be using black, brown, red, yellow, and white. And I am going to be um, using them primarily from dark to light, but I'll switch it up a little bit as we get um, into the end part of it. I'm going to start with just a little bit of black on my brush, and this will probably be the only time that I put black on my brush because it's very overpowering, so I don't want to make this too, too dark. Uh, what, the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the wing from the body. So my wing starts here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of take that black and start a little separation there and you can see it's not a clean line and then I'm also going to consider I, I need a little bit of black in that tail just to give it a little bit of shadow and now I'm not going to pick up black anymore so I have my dirty brush I'm going to pick up brown and red in addition to the black that was on there and I'm going to start shaping the feathers on this particular wing and if you go outside your line that's great that's just going to make it look a little bit more natural and I'm not pressing hard. I am just kind of giving um, some brush strokes in the direction I think that wing is going to go. And then I'm going to start adding a little bit of feathers on this underbelly. And I just went through some wet paint on my leg and I don't care because I'm going to be painting over it and disguising it anyways. While I have this dark color on my brush, I'm going to put a little shadow behind this eye, which um, is pretty representational of a natural um, cardinal. They have that dark spot back there. And now I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to pick up some red and yellow. And I like to use yellow on this because when I start to use white, um, if I have a lot of red on my brush, what's going to happen is I'm going to have a big pink cardinal and I don't want a big pink cardinal. So I like to use that yellow as kind of like a counter acting color here. Um, so now I've got a little bit of yellow on there and considering this to be like some chest feathers, this to be the underbelly feathers, and now I'm going to start using white and red. And this is where you're going to get to see the um, feathers really kind of take shape. You can dull down any um, areas that are too prominent for you. I will add more red after I get some of this white on here, but I just am kind of adding this so I can um, start to see the dimension in, in these feathers. Oops, now my tail is going to be a little bit bigger. And if you do little things like I just did, don't worry, we've got some snow coming too, so the snow will help to um, either disguise things that you don't like or um, just give them a little bit more uh, dimension to it. So I am just, you know, making sure I don't lose this focus of my wing. I'm going to add a little bit more red on this underbelly part. And I don't like to smooth it out too much. I want to be able to see the texture of these, of these feathers. Um, I do want to do something on the, on the head. So I'm going to take, I just added a little bit of white to my brush. I'm going to add some little lighter feathers up here. Now I'm going in for a little bit of red and yellow just to make sure I've got this represented nice on the forehead um, and it's not too, too bright or, you know, unnatural looking. So I'm just kind of adding these little colors onto here. And you can make it as light or as dark as you want. It's gonna be, at some point, it'll just be a visual preference on your part um, if you want it really bright or um, more of a subtle kind of look that's going to be totally up to you. And then once you get these colors on here, you know, you can tweak them um, or tweet them <laughs> as much as you want. Sorry, I have a lot of fun in my head sometimes. Um, you can get the, the underbelly, you can make little fluffier feathers if you want to, if you need to hide a leg, feel free to do so. It's um, really, once you, once you establish the movement of those feathers, you can really have fun with just kind of um, making them as fluffy as you want. You can continue to add layers onto them and it'll really like poof up the bird um, and have some good substance to it. Um, but you can call it 
and say, oh, I'm done whenever, whenever you feel like you've got a good representation of, um, of the nice colors that, that are incorporated here. And then when you do feel that you're all set, uh, we will be switching brushes to your small brush for the next step. Um, so I think I, I think I'm pretty good here. I like what that's, what that's doing. Just kind of touching up in through here and you can put your medium brush away in your water cup, take out that wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we're gonna finish the face. This is gonna include the eye and the beak. I'm gonna be using my small brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are black, white, red, and yellow. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna do a really slender line to separate the top beak from the bottom beak. And I'm gonna be using a combination of black and red on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna start about halfway up that curved part of the beak right here. And I, my, I'm gonna, my line is gonna end up at the tip of the beak, but I want it to be wavy. So um, you might wanna practice this on a little piece of paper so that way you don't make a frown. Um, you can start it going up or down or whatever you want, but you're gonna start about halfway. And that's how I'm gonna do mine. Um, and once I have that done, what I'm gonna do, I don't even need to wash my brush. I'm just gonna to touch my brush in the white paint. I'm creating my eye. So I wanna do a dot and a crescent to create this eye somewhere in the upper left well, I guess it doesn't really matter where it within this mask part you do it. Um, I like mine a little bit in the upper region, but if you put it down closer, it makes it look a little bit like a younger cardinal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one dot for the sparkle part of the eye, and then I'm gonna make a crescent in the bottom. I need a little more white so you can see it. Um, in the bottom right corner. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give it the white of the eye. And that's really all I do for the eye. I just wanna make sure it's prominent enough for you to see it. And if you do it too bright, you can always dull it down with a little bit of black, but it's just really a dot and a crescent. And then once you have that done, you wanna put a highlight on the top of your beak. So I'm gonna be using that yellow and white as my dominant colors for the highlight on the top of the beak. And I don't use a lot of paint and I'm just kind of rubbing it in. Looks like I have a little bit of black left on my brush so I'm quickly washing and drying that. The black will make it gray looking and you don't really want that. And this is something that you, you know, might take you a minute to catch the, the gist of it. And if you make it too bright, you can always go back into that red, which is where I had alluded to that you could use um, a little bit more red. So if you make it too dark or too bright, you can go right back into that red and just kind of adjust it until it gets the shade that you want. And by using a very little bit of paint, it will dry nice and fast, so you can sit here and fiddle with it until you get it the, um, the brightness or the dullness that you like. And if that underside is too bright for you, you can always use a little bit of black and red, and you can put almost like a little shadow underneath that beak. So that way it looks almost like it's got a rounded side to the bottom of it. Um, and that helps with the illusion process um, to make it look nice and three dimensional. And again, that's something that you can fiddle with and work on as you go. But um, that's gonna be the end of that step. Um, so we do have one more kind of crucial step to this and it's gonna be Oh, actually, yeah, it'll be with the medium brush. So when you're done with the eye and the beak, you're gonna put the small brush away in your water cup and get your medium brush out, the round brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, uh, we are gonna be using this medium brush, the 12 inch round brush, or 12, number 12 round brush. 
we're gonna let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. So I'm gonna be using white paint. Um, you may choose to do this in a different um, process. You might wanna use a bigger brush, you might want to flick your paint onto it, but we're gonna just kind of do a simplistic version and kind of dot it. Um, I do want snow all over the place, but before I go in for the snow all over the place, I want to put some strategic snow on my cardinal too. So I'm going to put a little bit of white on my brush. I like to put some snow sitting on the back of this cardinal. And so I'm just really um, dotting it in through here. I would like to put some on this little crown too. So I'm going to just kind of put some little tiny dots as if they're, you know, just have fallen on there. I'm going to put some in through this, these little feathers that have, um, that are under that chin. Maybe I'll put a couple of little feathers here too. Um, and then what I'm going to do, sorry, I'm improvising here. I wanted more feathers. I just put a little bit of black on my brush. Sorry. Now I'm washing my brush and putting snow back on it. This is what you do when you paint. Um, so I've got my strategic snow on the back. I've got some on there. I suppose you could put some on the nose, but I don't want, or on the beak, but I don't want to do that. So now I'm just putting snow everywhere. So for me, I like to kind of bounce my brush. I don't do it in a um, really systematic uh, way. I will put some in front of my branches. If you don't want it to look like smushed, you could totally just bump the, um, the tiny end of your brush, but you're going to have to reload frequently. Um, so if you want it to look more um, like really natural kind of snow with that's really tiny and fine you might want to use a different method which would be using uh, more of like a bristle brush or a toothbrush and you almost like flick it on there um, but for me i'm just going to kind of dot this on here and i am just having some fun here if you got like i got these um spots earlier that I made boo-boos on, so I will cover them with some, some snow, um, which is my right to do. So now I'm just adding snow, and you probably can hear my ice shaking in my beverage, so I'll just hold that with the other hand. Um, and I'm just continuing to make as much snow on here as I want to. You could have some in front of your bird if you want to, because that totally would happen. Um, but if you want it to just look like it's snowing around the bird, that works too. Um, and then I, I really, I like the snow because it kind of softens the whole painting. Um, it helps you to, you know, give it a little bit more dimension. You can certainly, like I said, disguise things that might have happened that you weren't totally sold on. Um, and then we have one final tiny little step to do after this. Uh, you can probably see I'm backing my head up now to see if I want any more snow on here, which I totally want it to be like a blizzard. Um, but I will I will refrain from making it too, too snowy. I'm having a hard time stopping. Um, okay, so when you feel like you've got enough snow on, you are going to put this medium big, or the medium round brush in your water cup. You'll take out your small brush and get ready for the final step. All right, so the last step is, the last step in any good painting is signing it. So I'm gonna be using my small round brush. I'm gonna be using black paint. You could use any color that you want. Um, I like to sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I do my initials, but you could certainly do your full name. You could do um, the date. Whatever makes it your own is how you sign a painting. Um, and that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting. And I look forward to painting with you again sometime. <laughs>